Delta 3 Anwar calls on civil servants to keep up excellent services. Overall completion rate of ECRL projects surpasses 56%. Good evening and salam Malaysia Madani and you're watching Malaysia Tonight with me, Mohamed Amin Carlos. Well, Prime Minister Dato Sri Anwar Ibrahim in his meeting with civil servants today wants them to continue with their outstanding services next year by adopting good values in the administration and not become a complicit. Now, speaking at the Prime Minister's Department Monthly Assembly for December, Dato Sri Anwar said good values that underline Madani Malaysia can lift the dignity of the country. Dan kalau kita ada nilai yang kita terapkan dalam madani ini saya yakin sebenarnya kita boleh angkat dan kita hentikan kelemahan nampau ada kekuatan dulu tapi ada kelemahan dulu kita bina dari kekuatan itu dan kita tinggalkan excesses yang berlaku. Ya, mudah-mudahan kita tutup labuh tirai 2023 masa ini dengan semangat yang sama ya. dan membuka lembaran baru sejarah negara. Dato Sri Anwar, who is also the finance minister, said civil servants should not be complacent and instead always strive to do better and excel. As such, he wants civil servants to always improve themselves and find ways to increase productivity as well as avoid weaknesses and deficiencies. Well, the overall rate of progress of the East Coast Rail Link or ECRL project has reached over 56% as of November, said Transport Minister Anthony Loke Siufok. Now, the progress of the mega project, according to him, is in line with the project's completion schedule from Kotobaru, Klantan to the Gombak Integrated Terminal in December 2026. Now, the ECRL is scheduled to be operational in January 2027. This year, he said, is also the peak year for the construction of this project. The ECRL project entered a new phase of construction early this year, involving the installation of flyover beams and the construction of the train stations and depots. Dan uh, seperti yang saya telah nyatakan, uh, fasa pertama ini daripada Kuantan ke Dungun akan mengambil masa kira-kira tiga setengah bulan sepanjang lebih uh, 97 km akan siap dalam masa tiga setengah bulan. Dan dengan uh, pembulannya fasa ini, kita yakin bahawa projek ECIL akan siap mengikut uh, tarikh yang telah ditetapkan iaitu akan mula beroperasi pada 1 Januari 2027. He said this at the ceremony to install the first ECRL track at the Section 10 ECRL station site in Gebeng today. The young Dibetuan Agong, Al Sultan Abdullah Riaitudin Al Mustafa Bilasha, who was accompanied by the Raja Permaisuri Agong, Tunku Aziza Hamina Maimuna Iskandaria, officiated the ceremony to install the first ECRL track. Once the project is completed, Logue said East Coast folks will enjoy a new chapter in the country's transportation system which, among others, will enable residents of Kuantan to arrive in Kuala Lumpur in just one and a half hours compared to three hours by road. In addition, Logue also said that so far, 23,000 workers are involved in carrying out work and 1,900 construction sites along the alignment while 26 tunnels have been excavated through the use of the drill and blast methods. The round table discussion. Now that's the quality of national education will be carried out nationwide to obtain the views of stakeholders in the education sector to improve the quality of national education. Education Minister Fadli Nasirak said the discussion was a game changer in getting views to identify achievements, opportunities and improvements in the national education sector. Met after attending the first roundtable discussion today, she said that among others, matters discussed included the Malaysian Education Development Plan or PPPM 2013-2025 and the report on the Program for International Student Assessment or PISA 2022, which was announced last 5th December. Dan ia tidak 
uh, berakhir di sini saja. Uh, diskusi ini akan dilanjutkan pula dengan diskusi-diskusi yang lebih uh, mendalam, terperinci uh, selepas ini khususnya untuk melihat kepada apa yang diangkat pada hari ini, game changer apa yang diangkat dan akan dituntaskan dalam perbincangan-perbincangan lain. Regarding the 2027 school curriculum, Fadlina said it is one of the agendas that will be included in the nationwide education tour series next year. The last 6 December, in a speech at the MOE 2027 school curriculum professional talk, Fadlina was reported to have said that character education, basic literacy in reading, writing and numeracy or 3M, and integrated learning were the new approaches incorporated by the ministry in the 2027 school curriculum. The 2027 school curriculum will be implemented in stages starting with year one and form one in 2027 while for preschool students it will be introduced in 2026. Business segment. Malaysia Halal Exports hit over 44 billion ringgit this year. Stay tuned. Well, a law to safeguard gig workers' welfare is urgently needed as gig economy is currently experiencing rapid growth in Malaysia. Human Resources Minister V. Siva Kumar said at the moment the ministry is focusing on formulating policies related to gig economy workers, including food delivery services, p hailing and e hailing as guidelines before establishing specific acts to protect their interests, especially in terms of income and social security. Uh, lebih ramai uh, anak-anak muda terutamanya uh, lebih berminat uh, untuk uh, mencuburi dalam uh, ekonomi gig ini dan uh, sebagai kerajaan yang prihatin kita juga kena melihat uh, kepada uh, kebajikan dan keselamatan sosial pekerja-pekerja gig ini uh, kita tidak mahu satu situasi di mana pekerja-pekerja gig ini ditindas uh, oleh uh, mana-mana majikan. Untuk itu uh, Kementerian Semua Manusia juga sekarang dalam proses uh, merangka uh, dasar uh, untuk uh, pekerja-pekerja gig ini. Dan selain daripada itu Meanwhile, Siva Kumar said the ministry has taken appropriate action to ensure that cyber attacks targeting the infrastructure of the social security organization, SOXO, do not recur. When met after a SOXO media event in Kuala Lumpur today, Siva Kumar said follow-up action would also be taken as soon as the mastermind responsible for hacking Perkeso's system, information base and website since the beginning of this month is identified. Well, so far, he said the problem is under control and Soxo's daily operations are running smoothly as usual, including the process of paying compensation and benefits to eligible recipients, as well as the processing of new contributor applications. Uh, semua uh, tindakan-tindakan yang sewajarnya yang perlu diambil telah pun diambil oleh uh, pihak Perkeso uh, dari awal lagi dan uh, buat masa ini uh, semuanya dalam keadaan yang uh, terkawal dan um, saya juga uh, um, uh, memberi jaminan bahawa uh, pengoperasian Perkeso uh, sedang uh, berjalan dengan lancar dan Well, Selangor recorded revenue collection amounting to 2.571 billion ringgit as of 6 December, which is 128% of this year's revenue collection target of 2 billion ringgit. Now, Menteri Besar Datuk Sri Amiruddin Shari said the amount was a manifestation and proof of the seriousness of the ranks of civil servants and members of the state government administration to drive the economy and Selangor and increase revenue for the benefit of the people. Dato Sri Amiruddin said that last year, Selangor's contribution to the country's gross domestic product or GDP continued to increase to 25.5% while improving on his role as a state that contributes more than a quarter of the country's GDP. Malah pencapaian ini menggambarkan keyakinan komuniti pelaburan serta rakyat tuanku dan menggambarkan sikap dan keperdajat kebertanggungjawaban Kerajaan tuanku dalam merancana dan mengagihkan kekayaan negeri secara efektif dan bersasar. 
who said this while delivering the loyalty pledge at the investiture ceremony held in conjunction with the 78th birthday of the Sultan of Selangor, Sultan Sharafuddin Idris Shah at Istana Alam Shah today. He said the state government will begin the process of the midterm review of the first Selangor plan, which will outline several economic recovery initiatives, such as the development of the Selangor Drone Center of Excellence and the Selangor Center for Artificial Intelligence. Malaysia's halal exports had reached 44.17 billion ringgit as of October this year, according to Deputy Investment Trade and Industry Minister Liu Chen Tong. Now, last year, the export value of Malaysia's halal sector jumped 64% to 59.46 billion ringgit compared to 2021, with products covering food and drink, ingredients, and cosmetic products. Well, he said the Ministry of Investment, Trade and Industry, METI, through the Halal Development Corporation, Burhan, or HDC, and the Malaysian External Trade Development Corporation, MaTrade, always promotes local products to foreign countries, including halal products from time to time. Well, this is done through the provision of platforms and business campaigns through major events, such as the Malaysia International Halal Showcase, MIHAS. Mi khas kali ke-19 yang diadakan pada bulan September 2023 telah merekodkan jualan produk halal yang mencecah 3 bilion ringgit iaitu 24% lebih tinggi daripada sasaran. Pameran halal terbesar di dunia ini telah memadankan 469 syarikat tempatan dan dengan 231 pembeli antarabangsa dari 44 buah negara. He was replying to Senator Dr. Dr. Mohamed Hatta Ahmad Ramli's question about the government's efforts to increase the export value of the country's halal industry, which amounted to 59.46 billion ringgit in 2022, compared to the global level of around 13.86 trillion ringgit. Well, the European Union, the EU, has channeled a grant of about 9.5 million ringgit to Antwerp Brews International and the Perak State Development Corporation, PNKPK. Now, Perak Menteri Basan, Dato Sri Saharani Mohammed, said the grant was aimed at conducting studies on Malaysia's attractiveness in the port and maritime sector and drawing data on its suitability as an international logistics and transport centre. Kekayaan sumber semula jadi perak serta ketersediaan infrastruktur ditambah dengan pembangunan bandar perindustrian maritim Lumut atau kita panggil Lumut Maritime Industrial City, LUMIC. Selain hubungan yang terjalin dengan PUABI telah menjadikan negeri ini tarikan kepada EU untuk membuat kajian secara komprehensif. He said the comprehensive study included nine assessments with four initial assessments focusing on Malaysia in general to attract potential investments from the EU or other foreign investors. The remaining five assessments would focus on preparing the roadmap to make Lumut the gateway to the country. Well, Payments Network Malaysia's Indiran Burhad or Paynet today announced a new app called the My Tourist Pay app, designed to give tourists visiting Malaysia access to the Do It Now QR payment network without opening a local bank account. Now, the launch of the new app held in Langkawi today marked the start of phase two of the Paynet Chamba Langkawi, aimed at digitalizing and internationalizing local Langkawi businesses via the digital economy. My Tourist Pay is Malaysia's first mobile payment application for international travelers, allowing them to add any credit or debit card details onto the platform and then scan the Do It Now QR to pay for goods and services. With the app, it helps to simplify transactions of tourists to access the products and services of small businesses around Malaysia. And it's very simple. We don't ask for any sensitive information. We don't ask for a long process. We don't ask you for documents. We don't ask you to load money. It is the most seamless, easy way. Anywhere in the world, you can go to any country. You won't find this. This is only going to be in Malaysia, where any tourist can now come in and be able to scan our Do It Now QRs without any effort. Operated by Paynet, the National Digital Payments Network.
network and infrastructure provider, the My Tourist Pay app ensures secure transactions during travels, allowing merchants to receive instant payments from travelers. Now, travelers just need to download the app from the Google Play Store or Apple App Store, add their credit or debit card in the app, and scan any Do It Now QR code to pay for products or services. For now, the app accepts only MasterCard and Visa cards. Now, with the new app, tourists can access over 1.9 million touch points using the Do It Now QR network. All he has to do is... Well, small and medium enterprises, or SMEs, are tracking, or rather in Malaysia, are on track to contribute 41% to the country's gross domestic product by the year 2025. Now, SME Corp Malaysia Chief Executive Officer Rizal Naini said this is due to the fact that many SME entrepreneurs now have raised their company's ability to penetrate the export market through the exposure and skills obtained from government's assistance and programs. Currently, we are at 38.4%. And for export, uh, currently we are 10.5%. But of course, there's this ambitious target up to 20% by 2025 for, for, for Malaysia MSMEs uh, to contribute to the, uh, the uh, so-called export value. Yeah? Enhance uh, SMEs uh, ready for exports to upskill them, to transform them in terms of their exporting capabilities. Results of this when met after SME Corp's Memorandum of Understanding or MOU Exchange Ceremony with Malaysian Technology Development Corporation, MTDC, in Kuala Lumpur. Still to come in a foreign front, Cambodian Prime Minister visits neighboring Vietnam to boost ties. Well, young Libertuan Agong Al Sultan Abdullah Riaitarin Al Mustafa Billah Shah today expressed regret and disappointment over the United States' use of its veto power to reject the United Nations Security Council or UNSC draft resolution urging a ceasefire between the Zionist Israeli regime and Palestine. Now, in a statement today, Comptroller of the Royal Household of Isana Nagara, Major General Dato Zahari Mohamed Arifin said Al Sultan Abdullah described the use of the veto by the U.S. had thwarted the UNSC's efforts to find a resolution to the conflict. Now, the action seems to legitimize the brutality of the Zionist Israeli regime against the Palestinian people with the killing of more civilians and the destruction of property, facilities, and medical facilities in Gaza. Now, His Majesty also expressed support for the government's stance through statements from Prime Minister Dr. Sri Anwar Ibrahim and Foreign Minister Dr. Sri Dr. Zamri Abdul Qadir in protesting and condemning the U.S. action against the resolution which was put forward by the United Arab Emirates. Al Sultan Abdullah also urged all Malaysians to continue showing solidarity with the Palestinian people and extend any form of humanitarian aid to elevate their burden and suffering. Well, Manila's National Security Council spokesperson on Monday said China's quote unquote aggressive actions against Philippine vessels in the South China Sea were a serious escalation on the part of Beijing's agents. Now, the Philippines accused China of heightening tensions after its Chinese Coast Guard used water cannons and conducted dangerous maneuvers at a fisheries bureau vessel delivering oil and groceries for the Filipino fishermen in Scarborough Shoal on Saturday. Now, it is also called out another incident against a, a resupply mission for Filipino troops stationed at a corrugated warship in Second Thomas Shoal on Sunday. And Department of Foreign Affairs spokesperson Teresita Daza told journalists at a news conference that the Philippines has issued another diplomatic protest and summoned the Chinese ambassador over Beijing's aggressive behavior in the South China Sea. Now, China claims almost the entire South China Sea a conduit for more than $3 trillion of annual shipborne commerce, including parts claimed by the Philippines, Vietnam, Indonesia, Malaysia, and Brunei. Now, the Permanent Court of Arbitration in 2016 said China's claims had no legal basis. 
Cambodian Prime Minister Hun Manet on Monday made his first trip to neighboring Vietnam in a bid to boost ties. Now, the leader who took office in August this year was welcomed by his Vietnamese counterpart, Pa Min Chen, at the presidential palace in capital Hanoi, where talks between both delegations were later held. Now, the two sides signed memorandums of understanding in the fields of trade, diplomacy, technology, and science. Vietnam and Cambodia established diplomatic relations in 1967 with two-way trade totaling 11 billion U.S. dollars in 2022. Vietnam is currently the largest investor in Cambodia in the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, or ASEAN Bloc, with a total registered capital of nearly $3 billion in 205 projects, according to state media VTV. Now, during the two-day visit, Hun Manet is also scheduled to meet with Vietnam's top leaders, including General Secretary of the Communist Party, Nguyen Phu Trong, President Ho Van Thuong, and Assembly Chairman Vong Dinh Hu. Well, Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida said on Monday that he would to take steps to restore trust in his government. As local media reported, he was planning to purge cabinet ministers embroiled in a fundraising scandal that has dealt a fresh blow to his public support. Now, the allegations that some lawmakers received thousands of dollars in unreported funds pose the biggest political challenge to the ruling Liberal Democratic Party, or LDP, since it reclaimed its long-held grip on power in 2012. Now, a poll conducted over the weekend saw public approval for Kishida's administration hit a record low, while media on Monday reported the main opposition party was preparing a no-confidence motion against top government spokesman Hirokazu Matsuno the highest-profile minister implicated in the scandal. The Asahi newspaper reported late on Sunday that Kishida has decided to replace four ministers and 11 other ministerial positions in his cabinet. And other media have reported Kishida could reshuffle his cabinet as early as Thursday. Kishida, who took office in October 2021, has seen his cabinet's approval rating slide in recent months, mainly over voter worries about rising living costs and looming tax hikes to fund his bumper military build-up plans. Well, despite economic woes, President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi is expected to cruise to a third term with credible opposition movements sidelined or crushed and the Arab world's most populous country distracted by the war in neighboring Gaza. But once the vote is over, analysts will be watching closely for austerity measures they believe were postponed for the elections and could start to put Egypt's finances back in order. Now, years of borrowing abroad has left Egypt with heavy foreign debt and a shortage of the hard currency needed to buy essential commodities. Disbursement in a $3 billion financial support package from the International Monetary Fund signed in December 2022 were halted after Egypt fell behind on its pledge to adopt a flexible exchange rate. Well, according to the central bank data, debt repayments due in 2024 stand at an all-time high of at least $42.26 billion. The price out of global debt markets, the government has financed a widening deficit by expanding domestic borrowing at a time when interest rates have been surging both domestically and abroad, leading to even bigger deficits. The interest bill on Egypt's domestic and foreign debt more than doubled in the July to September quarter from a year earlier. The three major rating agencies, Moody's, S&P and Fitch, all recently downgraded Egypt's sovereign debt further into junk territory. Well, the United Nations on Monday appealed for 46 billion U.S. dollars in funding for 2024 to help millions of people affected by humanitarian crisis around the globe, including in the occupied Palestinian territories, Sudan and Ukraine. Now, during a press conference on Thursday, UNA Chief Martin Griffith said that nearly 300 million people would require humanitarian assistance next year due to conflicts, climate emergencies, and economic factors. Now, that includes 74.1 million people in East and Southern Africa, a large portion of which are affected by the crisis in Sudan. Now, Griffith said the other organizations, including the Red Cross and the National Red Cross Societies, had made their own funding appeals. Now, the humanitarian system is facing a 
major funding crisis with just over one-third of the $57 billion required to provide aid funded last year, OCHA said, or OCHA, in its annual assessment of global humanitarian needs. Now, Griffiths described this as the worst funding shortfall in years. He said it had been difficult to decrease the appeal for 2024 and ensure aid agencies were realistic, focused, and tough-minded when assessing needs. Well, Serbia on Sunday completed the interconnector to a pipeline in Bulgaria, which would allow the Balkan country to diversify its gas supplies and reduce its dependence on Russia. Now, the launch of the interconnector will make operational the pipeline from the town of Novi Iskar in Bulgaria to the Serbian city of Nis, allowing Belgrade to assess gas from Azerbaijan and liquefied natural gas or LNG terminal in the Greek port of Alexandropolis. The capacity of the pipeline on the Serbian side is 1.8 cubic meters a year, which accounts for 60% of the country's annual gas needs. Now, the European Commission donated 49.6 million euros, equivalent to about $53.37 million for the construction of the interconnector. from the English Premier League. That and more coming up in sports. Well, in the English Premier League, Tottenham won the first time in six matches as Richard Lissons double-inspired a 4-1 rout of Decimal Newcastle this morning. Now, since topping the standing, after beating Crystal Palace on 27 October, Tottenham had lost four of their next five games to squander the momentum from their blistering start to this season. Destiny Udogi put Tottenham ahead in the first half in North London and Brazil striker Richarlison doubled the lead before the break. Richarlison natted again in the second half and Son Hyun Min converted a late penalty as fifth place Tottenham moved within three points of fourth place Manchester City. Joe Linton's goal in the final seconds was no consolation for outclass Newcastle. Following Thursday's 3-0 drubbing at Everton, this was another dispiriting result for Newcastle, who sit four points behind Tottenham in seventh. It was the worst possible preparation for their Wednesday's decisive Champions League group stage clash with AC Milan. Well, over in Luton, defending Premier League champions Manchester City were made to toil as Bernardo Silva and Jack Rillish scored three minutes apart to come from behind. Now, they turned an early goal deficit around to beat Luton Town 2-1 on Sunday and registered their first victory in five league games. The home fans were celebrating at halftime at a raucous Kenilworth Road after Elijah Adebayo rose to meet a cross from Andro Townsend and hit it in the opener seconds before the break. But after numerous City near misses, Selva scored in the 62nd minute when he curled a low left-footed strike into the far corner pass goalkeeper Tomas Kaminski. Grealish completed the comeback three minutes later when Julian Alvarez sent a cross across the face of the goal that the 28-year-old stretched out to slot in. City arrived at Luton, reeling from three draws and a midweek defeat by Aston Villa. The win capped the champions, who were missing striker Erling Haaland through injury in fourth place on 33 points, four shy of leaders Liverpool in a crowded title fight as Luton remain in the drop zone on nine points for a drift of 17 place. Well, that concludes this evening's edition of Malaysia Tonight. In the top story, Dado Sri Anwar calls on civil servants to keep up excellent services. Do you tune into World Today coming up tomorrow at 12.30 p.m. on TV2. You could also stream it via the application MyClick. Till then, I'm Mohamed Amin Carlos from the river to the sea. Palestine will be free. Thanks for watching.